34 for Donovan Mitchell as the Jazz win their third straight. They have won seven of nine overall. Boston loses the first game of a five-game trip. They'll be in Portland on Sunday. And the story of this game isn't Tatum's 37 or Mitchell's 34. It's the Jazz 27 made threes. That's one off their franchise record and two off the NBA record on 51 attempts. And even on a night when they turn the ball over 20 times 3D, it is hard to overcome a team knocking down 27 threes. Yeah, because when the ball is hopping the way it does when you're watching Utah play, it's fun basketball. And I was, you know, I love to see guys shoot the three. But I just think Quinn Snyder has, has told this team, Smitty, as long as y'all give the effort on the defensive end and really give it, I'm going to let y'all do what y'all want because they share so much. So as Donovan mentioned one night, you, I think you mentioned Mike Conley having seven threes tonight. He's not known as a three-point shooter. But when you're catching the ball from one side swing to the next swing, you're wide open, you got to shoot the ball well, Smitty. Yeah, you do. And I think for us, as we've been watching Utah Jazz so much, and they've been the leaderboard in the regular season, what do they do, even though not this game, I don't want to be, you know, Debbie Downer, but <laughs> when they're not making threes and the right. game slows What's down. What's your plan B? Yeah. And I think that's where I struggle, their plan B, because um, I like Rudy Gobert, 18 points. You know, but I, I just think for them is it puts so much pressure on Donovan Mitchell. I would love to see him get off the basketball because you have a point guard in Mike Conley who's played at a high level his entire career. And I think Mike Conley is unselfish enough to throw the ball ahead to him and let him tack from the wing. But when he has, you know, five set of eyes watching him and everybody standing, he's phenomenal. But I think it's just a hard struggle for him throughout the regular season. And then in the playoffs, it makes him work so hard. I love to see him post up a little bit more and run pick and roll with Mike Conley with other guys a little bit more. There's, a, there's some echoes of the, the critique of the Bucks before they made it happen for themselves as a championship. Oh, you know, they're a great regular season team. Yeah. They can't quite get over the hump. They've got Giannis Antetokounmpo, which makes yes. a little bit of a difference. The, the criticism of Utah – offensively is that they don't have enough guys who can create their own shots when things break there down with the system. Mm -hmm. And defensively, you're going to do things to go bare that takes him out of his comfort zone and exploit what he doesn't do well. You know, Matt, it, it's, it's funny. Um, I get a lot of people tweeting at me or asking me basketball questions. How he's the defensive player of the year, and then he can't play in the playoffs. That's what people ask me all the time. I mean, and they love him. They just said, sure. shouldn't a defensive player of the year be able to really control a game in big games. And I said, uh, it's just not his strength to play high pick and rolls. And unfortunately for Coach Snyder, no matter what they put him on, they keep finding him and they bring him up and they try to pick on him. I think they're going to have a find him a way to be able to play high pick and rolls. And then also, if he can't dominate defensively, it's hard to have Gobert in the game right. during the playoffs because of the offense. He's better but he's definitely not a, a dominant player on the Still low Still not going to play through him yes. offensively. And the answer to your question when the people tweet at you is that it's a regular season award. <laughs> right? There you the, go. The ballots Good go point. in before the end yes. of the regular season. So all the people who come at you and say, you voted for so-and-so mm -hmm. for MVP and his team got knocked down in the first round, you were wrong, blah, 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 blah. It's a regular season award. It has nothing to do with what happens in the But it is hard, though, Matt, in 3D. That no, it is. It's hard to make uh, sense uh, of. He was a player of the year. Yeah. Guy who wins the award a lot of times or in the top three yeah. gets picked on in it's, playoff basketball. It's weird. It's counterintuitive. Yeah. So yeah. to your other point, though, Matt, is Clarkston the guy, is Bogdanovich the guy, or does Utah need to make one more move? Because that's what Milwaukee did. They went and got Drew Holiday. Because in the yeah. years past, when they got deep in the playoffs, they needed someone else to, make, to be a difference. And Drew Holiday proved he was the difference facilitator, Defensive stopper, yeah. big shot. He didn't shoot the ball particularly well percentage-wise. Mm -hmm. He matter. always made a big three yeah. in the corner or yeah. made the right pass or got the big stop or the big rebound. That's the question I think we're all asking, too, for Utah. Who's going to be that other guy to help Donovan Mitchell down the stretch? Because we know Rudy Gobert is not going to be an offensive juggernaut for you. Well, and Drew is so good defensively that That's even right. if he's not hitting shots, you got to keep him on the floor. Mm -hmm. I feel like we uh, just did a disservice to the Jazz after a win. No, no we like the Jazz. The Jazz are a really good team. Really good team. No, we really love them. Team. But we, I think we all said we know who they are now. Yeah. Yeah. Now, are you good enough to beat Phoenix? Are you good enough if, the, if LeBron gets the Lakers right? Are you good enough to beat If everyone's healthy. Right. Will it work? There you go.